depends on where I heard.
Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the academic procession and the Chancellor. the 611th Convocation of McMaster University for the conferring of degrees is now in session. Good afternoon, everyone. Please be seated. We're told that the nursing convocation is the most rowdy. I'm not sure if it's the graduands or the families. <laughs> My name is Susan Denberg. I'm the Executive Vice Dean and Associate Vice President Academic in the Faculty of Health Sciences, where the School of Nursing sits. This afternoon, I have the great pleasure of acting as your master's ceremonies and welcoming all of you, graduands and guests, to this convocation ceremony. On behalf of the university, I would like to recognize and acknowledge that we meet today on the traditional territories of the Mississauga and Haudenosaunee nations and within the lands protected by the Dish with One Spoon Wampum Agreement. We must remember that we all have a role in upholding the spirit of the agreement which urged for the peaceable sharing of Earth's resources. We must also not forget that merely acknowledging our presence on these traditional lands is only a small step on our shared path to reconciliation. I challenge you to consider how you can foster reconciliation among the many peoples that inhabit these lands. I would like to start today's proceedings by acknowledging some of the notable leaders joining me on stage today. Our Chancellor, Ms. Sante Smith, President and Vice Chancellor, Dr. David Farrar, President Mohawk College, Mr. Ron McCurley, Associate and Assistant Deans, Directors, Chairs, McMaster, Mohawk and Conestoga, faculty members and honored guests. Before we start our formal program, May I first ask everyone in the hall to switch off any electronic device that may ring or beep 
during the ceremony, and I'll remember to do the same. I'd like now to call upon our Chancellor, Ms. Sante Smith, to deliver the Thanksgiving address and to make her own welcoming remarks. Thank you. Sego, Seba Guego. Greetings, everyone. Santi Smith Daglunyakwa, Nyungyats, Kaingehaga, Niwa Gohonsoda. Wat Gwenuelado. Welcome, honored guests, staff, faculty, family, friends, and most importantly, graduates from the faculty also of McMaster University, Mohawk College, and Conestoga College. It is an exciting day for all of you who are graduating, as well as for those people who have supported you and stood behind you and in many cases played a key role in your being here today. You have achieved a great deal to get here, and you should be very proud of your success and look forward to what the future might bring. Congratulations. Before we begin the ceremony, I would like to share some words from the Ohandu Galiwa Degwan, the Thanksgiving address. Se watonhosios ne gat ne galiwesa ne ona ne angali hoheste ne ganawala donsela. These words of Thanksgiving help to bring in unity our minds and hearts, so that we can acknowledge, give thanks affirm interdependence and interconnections, cultivate compassion, kindness, and recognize our responsibilities for sustaining and living in balance and peace with all of creation. Let us at this time acknowledge those who are sick, who are hurting, who will benefit from hearing these words. Dayatinuwalaro ne ongwe sua. We give thanks to all people, our ancestors, family, friends, colleagues, all nations, so be it in our minds. We give thanks in our greetings to Mother Earth, for she provides us with everything that we need to survive and thrive, so be it in our minds. We give greetings and gratitude to the waters, from the oceans to the streams to the waters flowing in our body. Water is life, so be it in our minds. We give thanks and greetings to the fish life who help to purify the waters and provide us with nourishment. So be it in our minds. We give thanks to all of the plants from the grasses to the medicines that help to purify and strengthen our bodies. Now our minds are one. We give thanks and greetings to all of the insects who help to pollinate the plants. So be it in our minds. We give thanks and gratitude to our sustenance foods, so be it in our minds. We give thanks and gratitude to all of the fruit life who help to nourish our body, so be it in our minds. We give thanks and greetings to the animals who sacrifice their lives for our sustenance and who are teachers for us. So be it in our minds. 
Dayati nuwalaro ne zitong ongua. Eto nayonto haget ne neguat nigula. We give thanks to all of the birds whose beautiful singing helped to uplift our spirit, bringing peace and calm to our hearts. So be it in our minds. Dayati nuwalaro ne galunda ongua. Eto nayonto haget ne neguat nigula. We give our greetings and gratitude to all of the trees. We cannot live without the oxygen that they provide. The roots and sap provide nourishment and cleansing for our bodies. So be it in our minds. Dayati nuwalaro ne zowere la warnier. Eto nayonto hoge ne naguat nigula. We give greetings and thanks to the circulating winds who travel the earth bringing new life and breath, so be it in our minds. Dayati nuwalaro ne ladiwerlas, eto nayontohage ne naguat nigula. We give gratitude and acknowledgement to uh, the grandfather thunderers who purify the air and awaken the earth and awaken us, so be it in our minds. Datsi dawanuwalaro ne anjongeni galakwa eto nayontohage ne naguat nigula. We give gratitude and greetings to the eldest brother's son who appears consistently each morning to provide sunshine, protection, and sustenance for all living things. Now our minds are one. Daiti nuwalaro ne asatanega wat nirele. Eto nayonto hagate ne naguat nigula. We give our greetings and gratitude to Grandmother Moon for her powerful pull on our waters and connection to birth. So be it in our minds. Daiti nuwalaro ne yo jitsto warlunyo. Eto nayonto hagate ne naguat nigula. We give greetings and gratitude to the stars and the cosmos for providing us with guidance and direction. So be it in our minds. Dayati nuwalaro ne deyonkiyarudom eto nayonte hoge ne naguat nigula. We give greetings and gratitude to our protectors, our spiritual guardians who provide clarity of mind and bring peace to our hearts. Now our minds are one. Datsi dawanuwalaro ne sanguayan deso, eto nayonto hage ne naguat nigula. We give gratitude and greetings to creation, to the great spirit, the creative energy that lives in everywhere, in everything, and in us. So be it in our minds. Da eto ni gawanage, da eto. Nyawe, thank you for listening to those words. And as you know, when we have a unified mind and heart, it promotes wellness and health. And these, what these words are meant to extend to you, to unify your heart and your mind in humble acknowledgement of the immensity of the creative living universe of which we are a very small part. It provides us with a daily context to our interdependence and responsibilities in upholding balance, care, and gratitude. And we are grateful. We are grateful to be here today in acknowledgement and celebration of all of your achievements, especially through these challenging times of the pandemic. Let us all honor the work that has been done. Let us all honor the work that you have done in your chosen field. Congratulations. Please enjoy the ceremony. Nyawe. Thank you, Santi. I'd like now to welcome Dr. Sandra Carroll, Vice Dean of the Faculty of Health Sciences and Executive Director of the School of Nursing to the podium. Sandra will be presenting our honorary degree recipient to the audience. Good afternoon. Chancellor Smith, 
By the authority of the Senate of McMaster University, I have the honor to present Alba DiCenzo. Alba DiCenzo graduated from McMaster's School of Nursing in 1974 before earning a Master of Science degree also from McMaster in 1981. She then completed her PhD at the University of Waterloo. She joined the McMaster School of Nursing faculty in 1978 as a lecturer, later becoming a professor with a joint appointment in the Department of Clinical Epidemiology and Biostatistics. From 2001 to 2011, Dr. DiCenzo held the Canadian Health Services Research Foundation, Canadian Institutes of Health Research Chair in Advanced Practice Nursing. In that role, she endeavored to increase the number of nurse researchers in Canada, specifically researchers investigating advanced practice nursing and how it could contribute to the work of health managers and policy makers. She also served for a decade as director of the CHSRF CIHR Ontario Training Centre in Health Services and Policy Research, a consortium of six universities offering training for graduate students in innovation related to health services and policy. In 1994, Dr. DiCenzo was lead author of a discussion paper that preceded the provincial government's decision to introduce nurse practitioners in Ontario. She was lead investigator on a series of research studies that evaluated neonatal nurse practitioners in tertiary level neonatal intensive care units. And she also studied the barriers and facilitators to the integration of nurse practitioners into primary health care. In 2010, Dr. Chichenzo led a decision support synthesis on clinical nurse specialists and nurse practitioners in Canada. And in 2014, led a systematic review of the effectiveness and cost effectiveness of advanced practice nurses. The co-founder of the Canadian Center for Evidence-Based Nursing, Dr. DiCenzo founded and became lead editor of the Evidence-Based Nursing Journal. She was also lead editor of the influential textbook, Evidence-Based Nursing, a guide to clinical practice. Dr. DiCenzo, who retired as a professor emerita in 2013 from the School of Nursing and the Department of Health Evidence and Impact, is a fellow of the Canadian Academy of Health Sciences and an honorary member of the Nurse Practitioners Association of Ontario, as well as a recipient of the Canadian Nurses Association Centennial Award. She received McMaster's Distinguished Alumni Award in 2019 and was inducted into the Faculty of Health Sciences Community of Distinction in 2016. She is a member of the Order of Canada who received the honor for research and evidence-based nursing for her contributions to the development of nurse practitioners. Chancellor Smith, I am pleased to present to you a McMaster alumna and colleague who is respected nationally and internationally for her work in advanced practice nursing, health services and policy research and for helping to lead the integration of nurse practitioners into our healthcare system. I ask that you confer upon Alba DiCenzo the degree Doctor of Laws, honoris causa. Alba DiCenzo, by the authority of McMaster University Senate, I have the great pleasure to confer upon you the degree Doctor of Science, honoris causa, in McMaster University with all the rights and privileges pertaining to that degree. I would now like to invite Dr. DeCenzo to deliver the convocation address. Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you, Dr. Carroll, for your kind words. Madam Chancellor, President Farrer, honored guests, family and friends of graduands, and especially you, the graduands. I am particularly honored to be here with you today because I am speaking to graduands whose journey at McMaster was nothing like you imagined when you started your first day of classes. Who would have thought that a couple of years into your training, there would be a pandemic and that your education would shift from face-to-face -to, -face to virtual? Who would have thought that some of you would be called on as students to take on extern roles to provide essential assistance to nurses who are most deservingly heralded as heroes, but emotionally and physically exhausted from the toll of caring for patients with COVID? Who would have thought how much you, as new nurses, would be needed immediately to shore up the serious nursing shortage we face? It must feel somewhat daunting for you, leaving here today, holding your degree, and walking into the next chapter of your lives as professional nurses, knowing how much is expected of you so early in your careers. But I have spoken with the leaders in our School of Nursing, and I have learned how nimbly and ably you adapted to new learning methods, and how innovative you have been you were challenged in many unexpected ways during your training, and you rose to the occasion. I know that it took an emotional and mental toll on many of you, and how doubly difficult it was to focus on your education while dealing with these challenges. I want to acknowledge the parents of our graduates because while you fully expected to provide emotional and likely financial support to your son or daughter when they began their nursing education, you didn't expect the added worry about their exposure to COVID. I would be remiss not to acknowledge the faculty in the School of Nursing who had to pivot ever so quickly to virtual education and creative clinical learning opportunities. I tip my hat to all of you and the courage and ingenuity with which you faced the past two years. The pandemic has brought Canada's health system to the brink, deepening cracks and highlighting critical gaps that have long been evident. These challenges bring both threats and opportunities. And today, I want to address some of these challenges and I hope to encourage you to take a role in protecting and improving our healthcare system. I am being bold, knowing that you already have a heavy load, heavy load to bear simply in becoming a much needed clinician. But if each of us does what we can, then we have a good chance of success. Approved as legislation in 1984, the Canada Health Act ensures that all Canadians, regardless of ability to pay, are entitled to receive quality physician and hospital care. This is a time when Canada needs to examine our healthcare system, expand it, revise it, and improve it to address the current needs of Canadians. However, we face a serious threat to health equity. Those who favor a two-tier system in which some pay for services to get to the front of the line are taking advantage of the current crisis to push private payment as a remedy to shorten wait lists and speed up access to care. You may have followed the four-year CAMBI trial in which Dr. Brian Day of CAMBI's Surgeries Corporation challenged the provisions of Medicare in the Supreme Court of British Columbia. In an 880-page decision in the fall of 2020, Justice John Steves rendered an unequivocal decision about healthcare in Canada. 
Access should be based on need, not on ability to pay. Five key findings were that an expansion of private pay health care would not reduce wait times in the public system and could, in fact, make them worse. That private pay health care undermines equitable access to care. That there are evidence-based ways to reduce wait times through innovations within our publicly funded health care system. That private pay health care would benefit mainly the wealthy and mainly the healthy, while harming the rest of the population. And that international evidence has shown that expanding privately financed health care would make our health care system less sustainable overall. Justice Steves noted that the changes being demanded would, quote, discriminate against the poor and the ill and exacerbate existing health inequities. A serious threat averted for now, but we need to be on the alert as advocates of a two-tier system will persist. The pandemic has vividly illustrated the need for transformation of our current system. Not how it is funded, but how it is delivered. For example, we need to implement evidence-based approaches to the surgical backlog. We need to create a human resources strategy that ensures adequate and appropriate staffing. And we need to improve coordination between hospitals and community-based care to free up hospital beds. An egregious flaw in our healthcare system was laid bare during the pandemic, our long-term care system. We watched in horror as large numbers of residents and staff members in long-term care homes were infected with the coronavirus. The Canadian Institute for Health Information released a report in March 2021 that found that Canada had the worst record for COVID-19 deaths in long-term care homes compared with other wealthy countries. Nothing to be proud of. The pandemic has stimulated the creation of standards and recommendations for long-term care, examining issues such as number and training of staff, home infrastructure, and quality of care measurement. However, recent surveys in Canada have shown that most seniors would prefer to age at home with appropriate service. This will require a major transformation in the care of the elderly and we can learn from countries such as Denmark, in which the elderly stay in their homes supported by community services. The pandemic has revealed the staggering extent of mental illness in Canada and has accentuated it. And as you are acutely aware, nurses and other healthcare workers have reported mental health issues as a result of working through the pandemic a critical nursing shortage resulting in heavy workloads and burnout has increased the incidence of post-traumatic stress disorder, anxiety, and depression. Most community mental health services are not covered by the Canada Health Act. Many stakeholders have pushed for the creation of a Canada Mental Health Act. The Canadian Mental Health Association has called on the federal government to invest in mental health promotion and mental health illness prevention programs, and to publicly fund community-based counseling and psychotherapy. Improvements in the delivery of our health care system, transforming the way we care for our elderly, and facilitating universal access to mental health services are three major opportunities that the pandemic has stimulated. Much needs to be done to enact the required changes, and we need all hands on deck. You are well positioned to play a role in protecting and improving the healthcare system. You are graduating from one of the best schools of nursing in the world, ranked third in Canada and 15th globally 
with a stated mission of empowering learners to innovate, to lead change in an increasingly challenging healthcare environment. You have learned how to identify and apply high quality evidence. And with the pandemic, you have demonst demonstrated your innovative spirit, your resilience, and your ability to adapt to changing circumstances. You are powerful in number with over 300,000 registered nurses licensed to practice in Canada. Nursing is the largest, most diverse, and one of the most respected of all healthcare professions. You are supported by powerful organizations, including the Canadian Nurses Association, the Registered Nurses Association of Ontario, and the Canadian Federation of Nurses Unions, each of which is determined to protect our universal healthcare system, improve care of the elderly, both in the long-term care settings and in the community, and improve the care of those with mental illness. These organizations are strong lobbyists and strong patient advocates. Healthcare policies, for the most part, are political. We must keep in mind that our elected members of provincial and federal governments are there to represent us, the voters, and our voices are important. I'd like to propose three actions for you to consider. First, we go to the polls on June the 2nd to elect our provincial government. Be informed about the platforms of the various parties and question the candidates in your riding. For example, you may want to explore why the current government is planning to fund more for-profit long-term care homes when the death rate from COVID was much higher in these homes compared to not-for-profit homes. While the NDP, the Liberal, and the Green parties are promising to phase out for-profit ownership of long-term care homes. Second, once the government is formed, there are various ways to influence our members of parliament, be it through signing petitions, writing letters, calling them, meeting with them to discuss concerns, organizing and participating in rallies and demonstrations, and holding them accountable for outcomes. It is through such actions that the government has been influenced to develop beginning policies around childcare, dental care, and pharma care. Third, in the future, consider running for office. You may quickly react, who, me? But consider this, if not you, then who? In fact, seven registered nurses representing all major parties are running as candidates in this provincial election. Doris Grinspan, CEO of the Registered Nurses Association of Ontario, said that is about double the number in recent elections, and it comes at a time when many nurses are becoming more vocal about the need for change in health care. You have learned that there are many determinants of health and that we must think about health broadly considering actions to address, for example, the growing income disparities in our society, homelessness, climate change, and systemic racism. We are well aware that the shortcomings of our healthcare system fall disproportionately on the low income, the marginalized, and the vulnerable populations. There are many organizations at the local, provincial, and national levels focused on many of these issues with which we can get involved. Much is being asked of you as you enter the nursing profession to deliver high quality care and improve our healthcare system. To do this effectively, it is important to practice self-care to maintain your own health, to practice kindness to yourself and others, 
to champion positivity and to look for opportunities to celebrate accomplishments. One important way of not feeling hopeless and overwhelmed is to be active in trying to make things better. And now I offer you my congratulations and my warmest wishes for a happy and successful career. I know that many lives will breathe easier because you have lived. And for that, we will all be grateful. Thank you very much for the honor of addressing you on this very special occasion. Niamagoa, thank you. Thank you for your words. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. David Farrar will now come to the podium to present the graduands to our Chancellor for admission to their degrees. Will the graduands please stand? This is the great part when they turn the lights on and I can actually get a chance to see you all. Madam Chancellor, on behalf of McMaster University Senate, I present to you these candidates and those in absentia in order that you may confer the appropriate degrees upon them and I bear witness that they are worthy and suitable. Graduands, by my authority and that of the McMaster University Senate, I have the great pleasure to admit those before me today and those in absentia to their individual degrees at McMaster University with all the rights and privileges pertaining to those degrees. My sincere congratulations to you all. Please be seated. Graduates, I now ask each of you to join me on stage so that the Chancellor and I may welcome you to the McMaster Community of Scholars. I would be delighted to shake your hand or to bump fists or to touch elbows or to acknowledge your contributions without touching. Our Chancellor will be acknowledging your contributions without touching. Congratulations.
Honoured guests, so that each graduate's name may be heard, it would be appreciated if during the presentation of the graduates, you would hold your collective applause to the end of each degree category. Thank you. Madam Chancellor, may I present to you the following graduates of the degree Doctor of Philosophy. Carly Whitmore. Mary Lee Use. <laughs> Madam Chancellor, may I present to you the following graduates of the degree Master of Science. Céline Benoit. Rampreet Chahal. Ruth Ann DeMeo. Andrea Fulton. Elizabeth Green. Claudia Maria Ponce. Nicole Patricia Savary. Margaret Sunmola. Mainka Tandon. Madam Chancellor, may I present to you the following graduates of the degree Bachelor of Science in Nursing. <laughs> Den Joseph Malasig Eban. Cherith Abigonya Wardana. Cher Bano Abadisi. Sean Christian Abuyan. Courtney Maureen Adorian. Fatima Al Tim Me. Tilaxi L. Red Susan Author Shahad Ali Nasawaru Yumad Usin Esma Amirsha Nicole Amorium. Caitlin Anderson. Carmina Enki Gianco. Stephanie Antonucci. Asma Asimali.
Tanya and Tanasova. Katie Lynn Ballardo. Hannah Christine Balaz. Dylan Stephen Baliki. Natalia Joanna Bandos. Marissa Rosaline Barreto. Jessica Pamela Bauer. Jenna Bulio. Natalie Bell. Shalyn Bell. Sadie Bender. Hannah Benning. Nicole Besselaire. Ashley Batia. Sony Buju. Christian Tawaba Biba. Sila Ren Kiri Bishop. Alexa Angela Bistas. Tyler Blake. Amanda Ray Bloor McLeod. Alicia Bowmans. Hannah Boonstra. Andrea Savia Rita Borges. Matthew Borkowski. Caitlin Elizabeth Bochel. Rita Budiwan. <laughs> Rebecca Ella Brenken. Banan Tahir Bakari. Jessica Burgess. Jamie Jacqueline Burns. Sydney Burns. Gabrielle Lam Kudang. Chris Carlu Garzo. Ulana Campbell. Kitty Chow. Kelsey Cardinal. Gabrielle Katana. Haley Kahi. Christy Sensor. Abigail Chandler. <laughs> Esther Chi. Scarlett Chen. Haydeen Cho. <laughs> Sabrina Margarita. Chen Chosi. 
Amy Isabel Chianflon. Me. Kiva Clancy. Genevieve Clayton. Aaron Clout. Elisa Kondo. Linda Lee Connolly. Peyton Mackenzie Cormier. Jennifer Lynn Cowan. Sophia Rhiannon Crawford. Ali Crinklaw. Paige Gail Crocker. Natalie Crozen. Emily Crookshank. Tiana Cunningham. Victoria Sear. Lauren Dorora. Tiffany Dagus. Nicole Cassandra Dan. Pia Samantha David. Alyssa Elizabeth Davidson. Aaron De Carvalho. Morgan Isabel Mary Dumel. Lauren Pauline Dempsey. Zihan Dang. Brooklyn Paige Dennis. Ramnit Kaur Dhaliwal. Parnit Kaur Dillon. Elena Paprika Di Carlo. Christina Marie Decintio. Emily Di Cosmo. Megan Taylor Dieter. Christine Disson. Andy Shu Chang Dong. Felicia Donkor. Christina Jurisic. Chelsea Ann Duster. Jessica Ebrahimi Gagar. Cole Frank Eddy. Taylor Edwards. Cecilia Evers. Hannah L. Samek. Caitlin Lee Ellis. Samantha Enstrom. Rezi Espedion. Joshua Warren Everson. Nathan Reuben Edward Fahi. Ramez Ferris.
Kayla Ferguson. McKenna Adele Ferreira. Katrina Ann Fitzpatrick. Stephanie Ruth Flaherty. Michelle Renee Fletcher. Kayla Fong. Logan Freiberger. Miriam Friesen. Samantha Maja Gabriel. Kayla Gallagher. Isabella Louise Galvin. Kelsey Gale. Hunter Marcus Jinor. Sufala Sulafa Medina Ghani. Natalie Gazarian. Andrea Gilchrist. Sydney Giles. Jenna Gleason. Courtney Glenn. Caitlin Gloff Chesky. Rukel Sofia Gomez Duarte. Megan Elizabeth Gorman. Dolores Granillo. Chantal Marie Grenier Bloomfield. Hasimran Graywall. Kristen Griffiths. Vanessa Grizales. Emma Grow. Faith Virginia Elizabeth Rose Gruber. Davina Louise Darren Guevara. Ashwara Gujray. Jessica Nicole Hodder. Aliyah Mah Mahmud Hadi. Ganima Rahab Haji. Madeline Hammer. Summer Hanafi. Melanie Karen Hanna. Miranda Harrington. Azra Hashim, Hashmi. Christina Haska. Madison Hawley. Kevin Hayward. Alicia Hedges. Natasha Carey Hiringja. Aaron Heikamp. Habiba Helmi.
Lise Hensel Williams. Juan Carlos Herrera. Kristen Cheyenne Hess. Mercy Justine Hildebrand. Cassandra Hills. Jeffrey Ho. Julie Hong. Sydney Hong. Rebecca Holland. Paige Holmes. Emily Horsefall. Carly Wong. Sin Yi Wong. Atika Hussain. Hiba Imra. Kadeen Ingram. Maisha Isham, Maisha Mishur Misham. Maya Iskander. Jazelle Jab Er and Sari. Krizanlin Hasindho. Angela Jack. <laughs> Natasha Jacobs. <laughs> Melissa Alexandra James. <laughs> Hannah Elizabeth Jandrew. <laughs> Regan Yancey. Melanie Noella Jerron. <laughs> to Lucy Juga Nuanda Sivam. <laughs> Leanne Rose Jenkins. Selma Jatha. Ash G. <laughs> Vanessa Amber Jasink. Jacqueline Renee Johnson. <laughs> Tegan Johnson. <laughs> Jennifer A. Juma. Maxine Veronique Liao Juno. Oh, Michael Camel. Warda Cameron. Jessica Ellen Kane. Karina Carabella. Brooklyn Cardes. Jade Kehoe. Jocelyn Kenny. Sira Khalid. Ala Khalil.
Humdan Khan. John V. Karwar. Subi Kwaja. Rebecca Kim. Flora Kim. Diane Clage. Jessica Emily Clara. Elaine Rhonda Marie Klim. Madeline Koo. Jocelyn Carr Cooner. Victoria Cranjack. Rebecca Krebs. Julia Ashley Kubich. Kiranpreet Kundi. Anna Kwan. Bridget Marie Kwasnick. Josephine Lay. Angeli Lama. Carlina Maria Langford. Mandy Sumli Lau. Rebecca Lazar. Julia Lazaro. David Min Quan Lee. Allison Jean Maria Leda. <laughs> Olivia Faith Dong Zi Leong. <laughs> Selena Leong. Jehong Leong. Jane Marie McClure Lierman. Harriet Lim. Dana Lynn. <laughs> Kelly Lynn. Emily Michelle Lindsay. Caroline Barbara Linzel. Caitlin Emily Liu. Paula Lipyak. Olivia Belbin. Jonathan Isaac Louis. Anya Lukic. Cameron Julia Lum. Brianna Lund. Daniel Marie Lund. Danielle Marie Lund. Ivy Lee. Lara McDougall. Michaela Ann McGregor. Abigail Edith Mackey. Titania Maximiv. Samira Malik. Meg Malloy. Woo! 
Jillian K. Mancera. Kana Manchur. Anissa Mandar. Eknor Man. Alyssa Marina. Sierra Laken Hill Martin. Asiya Maria Masengesho. Roha Masood. Karen Mitali Masi. Megan Masters. Catherine Vanessa Mall. Bethany Mazik. Megan Melissa McCauley. Jordan McCarter. Brianna Ireland McCready Branch. Hannah Westlake McDonald. Jessica McGregor. Carly McLean. Haley June McMillan. Madison Laura McPhail. Julia Hannah McTierin. Rim McConan. Amy Rose Mester. Unjali Rose Mikloska. Emma Catherine Costigan. Miller. Jane Miller. <laughs> Jennifer Miller. <laughs> Olivia Miller. <laughs> Brooke Milligan. <laughs> Taylor Alexandra Merko. Kayla Mackenzie Mitchell. Sagal Yasin Mogi. Sarah Eileen Moeller. Nicole Madeline Mardu. Danelda Corinne Morris. Julia Rebecca Mugisha. Diana Murugoki. Jocelyn Muwa Dozuri. Ryan Tufik Nahas. Fantima Diana Nazar. Michaela Lauren Nesbitt. Allison Newell Skinner. Katie Newton. Woo! 
Eden Kamba Nagina. Calvin Nguyen. Jacqueline Yen Nguyen. Jessica Jean Marie Nielsen. And Julie Nalbut. Esther Nayamiki Donkor. Lauren Emma Odardi. Oyinyi Christine Aduswa Oko. Omalara Olawur. Tamara Almido Johnson. Toby Christiana Omidina. Vesa Aruchi. Liz Mary Roxana Osorio. Sylvia Ostrom. Efmina Olivia Otobo. Alyssa Lynn Overy. Marissa Pacheco. Eduardo Diaz Pagatan. Chelsea Parsons. Ashka Patel. Dara Patel. Dimple Patel. Sushit Pathiaran. Amy Pello. Jacob Newman Pensinier. Sabrina Lauren. Percy Shetty, Jennifer Fan, Victoria Gail Fenn, Melanie Dujardin Pichet. Martha Pierre Michel, Michaeli Gianna Gonzalez Pinero, Allison Pollock, Tabitha Olimar Putone Le Don. Paige Porter, Katya Nicola Monica Preinch, Luke Arthur Priestman, Natalie Prusak. Simran Punja. Rabia Kaderi, Cameron Quatch, 
Maya Raff. Ruth Brenna Singher. Matthew Ratcliffe. Megan Rawlinson. Regine Reba Montan. Johanna Ruth Reinhardt. Marley Reinhardt. Emily Reitzes. Brianna Chelsea Rye. Veronica Eunice Rye Rodriguez. Sonia Rincon Marquez. Krista Rock. Julia Rodriguez. Isabella Maria Rosati. Rayleigh Victoria Ross. Kirsten Rovers. Peyton Sydney Russell. Haley Nicole Sackerty. Manjo Kaur Saini. Kiera Kirsten Salomon. Amanda Sam. Melissa Sangara. Emma Sangster. Lauro Ellen Saunders. Olivia May Hempel Shaver. Anna Francis Shramp. Ashley Scott. Mara Elsie Selleck. Sherry Katharina Serrano. Jalak Munishbi Shah. Shaloni Shah. Shaweda Sharma. Lauren Michelle Shaw. Rachel Michelle Shaw. Michelle Adriana Sharen. Ki Wan Shin. Corina Jo Marie Sakonolfi. Simran Kaur Sindhu. Demi Lola Daniel Sijuadi. O Mike C. Seekder. Sabrina Nicole Silva.
Ekosua Siemens, Emily Simpson, Jessica Sinisal, Celia Siriani, Kritika Nathan, Senuta Sivaz Sudan. Alexander James Skipper. <laughs> Alexia Marie Skypus Foucher. Mark Slodovinik. Catherine Smith Ivemark. Ryan Snowdon, Saskia Doreen Snyder Penner, Courtney Soner, Jessica Rose Sorbara. Alicia Haley South, Jamie Lee Southward, Sarah Danielle Spaninga, Susanna Stahera, Jessica Adriana Starr. Corinne Stavinga, Woo! Megan St. Croix, Woo! Lauren Madison Stemsky Crawford, Woo! Megan Stevenson. Kiana Rose Stradiotto, Matthew Strong, Cameron Stuller, Haven Swartz. Dua Syed, Kiran Syed, Muhammad Ave Syed, Claudia Maria Shahal. Christina Tardelli, Carolyn Ta Tai, Brianna Deborah Rose Theart, Kieran Thiera. Amanda Elizabeth Titus, Nicole Toner, Autumn Nicole Toninger, Mackenzie Tosh. Andrea Trivunovic, Woo! 
Krista, Yen, Shi, Si. Mariana Turcotte. Ashley Upton. Kaylee Van Ash. Molly Van Hooven. Nicolette Margaret Vanderveld. Harley James Bulasco. Emma Maria Visca. Lee Mai Chin Jennifer. Stella Vujic. Vanessa Vong. Mariam Wafa. Trisha Wagler. Sabur Wahidi. Anna Jean Walzak. Kira Walker. Melanie Rose Peggy Walker. Shannon Megan Watson. Rachel Watson Sayre. Christina Weber. Kendall Marie Whaley. Megan Patricia Whaley. Abigail White. Paige Whithall. Benjamin Winger. Devin Gabriella Astor Winter. Hannah Jane Winter. Laura Whitmer. Jessica Sarah Wong. April Wright. Mitchell Wright. Shavaya Alexandra Winter. Jessica Shiel. Cassandra Rose Marlene Yardley. Nile Yousafi. Samira Youssef. Deborah Lynn Zagar. Lema Sarifi. Yifan Hang. Yun Yang Hong. Tina Zilanka.
You didn't need any prompting. <laughs> Thank you for that enthusiastic response and congratulations to the graduates. I'd like now to introduce Mr. Alexander Skipper, a graduate of the degree in Bachelor of Science in Nursing, who will be delivering the valedictorian address. Good afternoon, graduates. It is my great pleasure to be celebrating with you today here on the traditional territories of the Mississauga and Haudenosaunee nations. This land that we studied upon over the past few years is protected by the Dish with One Spoon Wampum Agreement, a treaty that represents our shared responsibility as those who live on this land to care for it and its creatures. In the coming months, as we don the role of a nurse upon these lands, I invite us all to consider the many ways we can honor this agreement and the truth and reconciliation calls to action in our practice. This includes knowing the history of the indigenous peoples of this land, the legacy of colonization, and the or relevance of indigenous knowledge and worldviews to nursing and its own bodies of knowledge. With me on stage today is Ms. Santi Smith, Chancellor of McMaster University, Dr. David Farrar, President and Vice Chancellor, Dr. Susan Denberg, um, Ooh, sorry, I lost my spot. <laughs> Dr. Susan Denberg, Executive Vice Dean and Associate Vice President of the Faculty of Health Sciences and our Master of Ceremonies. Dr. Sandra Carroll, Vice Dean of... Sorry, guys. <laughs> Dr. Sandra Carroll, Vice Dean of the Faculty of Health Sciences and Executive Director of the School of Nursing. Dr. Jana, Joanna Piarzo, Assistant Dean of the Undergraduate Nursing Education Program, as well as Dr. Miriam Spinner, Dr. Alba DeCenso, Ms. Karen Ball, Dr. Nancy Carter, Ms. Rooney Deb, and Ms. Melissa Poole. Their presence at the ceremony today is an honor and is indicative of the significance of our convocation ceremony and of our academic achievements. I would like to thank each of them for joining us here this afternoon. As we mark the completion of our undergraduate studies here at McMaster University, it is my sincere hope that each and every one of you feels incredibly proud of your accomplishment in making it to the end of nursing school. Whether your path brought you here from high school, previous undergraduate education, or a practical nursing career, what we all have in common is the incredible amount of work, dedication, and study that we've put into becoming the next generation of registered nurses. We have successfully researched, practiced, and select the most corrected our way into the nursing profession, and this was no small feat indeed. Of course, and I'm sure many of you out there would agree, that our accomplishments have been made all the more possible by those who have supported and championed us over our studies, many of whom are with us here this afternoon. On behalf of the class of 2022, I would like to extend our biggest thank you to all of the family, friends, and faculty that have occupied these roles in our lives over the past few years. You have been truly amazing. As our undergraduate studies come to a close, each one of us is also presented with a very exciting question. What comes next? As I've come to know the nursing community here at McMaster, Mohawk, and Conestoga, it has become clear that this question holds unlimited possibilities for the students in this program. I know that the crowd in front of me holds the nursing bedside leaders, researchers, and educators of tomorrow. Armed with the skills that we've acquired here during our studies and supported by the rich personal knowledge and worldviews we all possess, I have no doubts that each one of us is stepping into a successful and impactful career. However, it can't go unrecognized that we are graduating into a uniquely challenging healthcare landscape. There will be obstacles that we have to overcome that previous generations of new graduates did not. However, I encourage us all to hold our optimism with more weight than our fears. The reason for this being that we have the ability to make change in ways like never before. As illustrated by the reinstatement of Canada's chief nursing officer role by the federal government, the pandemic has made the significance of nursing evidently clear. The value of nursing knowledge to healthcare continues to gain more recognition and with it the demand for a highly skilled nursing workforce. We, the McMaster undergraduate nursing class of 2022, are the newest, newest members of that workforce and are primed with the tools and knowledge we need to rise to this call. 
As we've navigated our schooling during the era of Zoom lectures and online meetings, we have also developed incredible levels of adaptability and grit. Sure, nursing is challenging right now, but I have every confidence that we are up to this challenge and are ready to take advantage of all of the opportunities this profession has to offer. With this in mind, as I wrap up my address, I wanted to leave you all with a piece of advice that I've learned both from my experiences here at McMaster and from my grandmother and aunt, both of whom are nurses themselves and the latter a Mac graduate. To begin, I want you to take a look around and reflect on all of the people you've shared this journey with. Think about that person who stayed up late with you to study or who you shared a conversation with on your lunch break at clinical. Bring to your mind the people that you spent time with when taking a break from all of your studies. I want to emphasize that the friends and the peers you are thinking about right now, they get it. Just as they've shared your journey with you during school, they also take the next steps into the world of nursing by your side and understand exactly what you're going through. As we move out into the wider world, don't let go of these relationships and this community. Together, we can uplift each other into the excellence we are capable of and overcome any obstacle in our way. Once you're a McMaster nurse, you are always a McMaster nurse, and that is something that will never change. Good luck to each and every one of you. I am very proud of this class, and congratulations again to the McMaster Undergraduate Nursing Class of 2022. Thank you, Alexander. You've represented your fellow students, your graduates, very well. May I now introduce Rooney Deb, a graduate from the Bachelor of Nursing, class of 2017, and a representative of the McMaster Alumni Association, who will deliver the Alumni Association address. Thank you, Doc. Thank you, Dr. Denberg. Uh, thank you, Chancellor Smith, President Farrar, President McCurley, colleagues, guests, and nursing leaders and faculty at McMaster, Mohawk, and Conestoga for having me. I like to joke and say that's Rooney like Mickey Rooney, not macaroni. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure my patients get it as well as congratulations to the award winners, honorees, and of course you, McMass members of the McMaster graduating class of 2022. It's a wonderful opportunity to be back here in my old stomping grounds and see you guys all again. As a previous alumnus, I know that in a few years, your memories of nursing at McMaster will be dominated by lifelong friendships extracurricular activities, or learning experiences that will steer you in the direction of the nurse you want to be. I know for this class specifically, the pandemic played a central role in all of the above. However, all of these memories will soon become your good old days at Mac. A lot of philosophers have written about the good old days, like Dolly Parton, Ziggy Marley, Usher, and probably the greatest philosopher of them all, Weird Al Yankovic. But on this topic, I prefer the wisdom of Andy Bernard of the Dunder Mifflin Paper Company from the hit TV show, The Office, who said, I wish there was a way to know you're in the good old days before you've actually left them. Regardless, regardless of the specific memories at Mac that stick with you, I hope McMaster stays with you as part of your good old days, while at the same time playing a role in your good new days. After you leave the ceremony today, I welcome you into the McMaster Alumni Association, which will help link your present to the best parts of your past and provide you a never-ending stream of events and networking opportunities. This includes helpful resources to assist you in your future endeavors. But if, but if your path takes you away from Hamilton towards the Canadian centers like Victoria or even world centers like London, 
just know that McMaster will always be there. Once again, members of the nursing class of 2022, congratulations on your convocation. I know it is a bittersweet moment for everyone here as you leave MAC to pursue wonderful nursing opportunities ahead. However, we're proud to welcome you, not only to the nursing profession, but to the McMaster alumni family. Thank you. Thank you, Rooney. And now is my final responsibility as your Master of Ceremonies. It's my great pleasure to invite our President Vice Chancellor, Dr. Farrar, back to the podium to deliver the presidential address. Chancellor Smith, distinguished guests, award winners, faculty, members of the McMaster community, members of the McMaster graduating class. For more than two years, we've dealt with an unwelcome guest in our lives, a global pandemic that has reminded us of how fragile our lives are and how much we really need to be together. Members of the graduating class, for more than two years, you have worked through the isolation, the disruption, and possibly the health challenges and personal losses associated with COVID-19. In spite of the very challenging conditions for completing your coursework and your other requirements for your degree, you have persisted. And so I would like to congratulate each and every one of you for your ability to adapt and thrive and succeed. 60 years ago, Dr. Harry Thode, who was president of McMaster, who had been president of McMaster for less than a year at that point in time, attended a lecture given by the chair of medicine at the University of Toronto. He heard the chair, Dr. K.J.R. Whiteman, criticize health education as being obsessively rote. Whiteman argued that education should inspire an understanding and a love for people, a sense of responsibility, and a sense of proportion. Thode had been experimenting with progressive learning strategies since he arrived at McMaster as a faculty member two decades before that, and he was electrified by Whiteman's criticism of medical education in the early 60s. By 1967, Thode's hand-picked team of revolutionary medical educators was designing a new medical curriculum for a new medical school. This approach to education, now known as problem-based learning, would, in the words of the historian uh, Greenlee, reverberate around the world. This was a movement in education that earned McMaster a global reputation and polished the value and the prestige of every McMaster degree, including yours. There will likely be a time in the years ahead when you'll be struck by an idea or a concept, something new or radical, something that others think may be just a little crazy. I hope when that time comes, you will be ready, as Thode was, to identify the moment and seize it. Being ready means you need to continue to learn actively and widely. It means maintaining a wide range of interests and connections, especially to those outside of your discipline and with different perspectives. It has always impressed me that Harry Thode, who was a geologist and a nuclear chemist, and who was president of a university without a medical school, had found inspiration in a talk by a physician from another university. So I hope that you will be ready, as Thode was, and as McMaster has been, to continue to look for radical solutions to big problems and to seize big opportunity. I hope that you will continue to find ways to do things differently, to be inspired by others, to find allies and work collaboratively on the most intractable issues. Congratulations on arriving at Convocation, despite all the obstacles that have been put in your path for the past two years. You should be proud, as I am, of your achievements, and you should be excited, as I am, for your next steps. Welcome to the worldwide community of McMaster alumni. I now invite our chancellor to the podium.
Yeah, well, President Farrar, for your words and for all of the contributions and the, the words that were said today. Yo Yanale, Yo Yanale in Gaingeha, the Mohawk language translates to mean good job or well done. So I extend uh, Yo Yanale to everyone here. Congratulations for all of your work. Congratulations to the class of 2022. I myself am a McMaster alumna and I look forward to seeing where you go from here. And as each and every one of you were walking across stage, I looked into your eyes and I saw potential. I saw excitement. So I wish you all the best on your journey forward. Success, learning, growing, and know that McMaster will always be here, as been said, to return to for research, collaborations, and to extend your friendships. Nyawa Goa. Nyawa Alexander, congratulations on all of your achievements. And as Ms. Deb said eloquently, you are now all graduates and members of this wonderful McMaster alumni family. President Farrar, you've given us a lot to think about. I know what I, person, I personally will remember the words of, uh, words of wisdom and the sharing of the history of McMaster. Graduates, take those wise words with you as you go. My very best wishes to all of you. Now in closing, I have a few final announcements. Immediately following the ceremony, I encourage all graduates and their guests to make their way to the mezzanine level where there are a number of photo opportunities set up for you. Finally, I would ask that you please remain standing at your seats until the academic procession and graduates have left the hall. Please um, join now in the singing of the national anthem. After the singing of the anthem, this convocation stands adjourned. Nyawe.